Come on, vibe. It's the Berean bringing you some card. A Wii U representing the Clan One God. And uh, this is the Berean bringing you a Call of Duty video here, real quick. Drop a 40 TDM. Um, and we're going to try to every Sunday upload a video that gives glory to the Lord, teaches his scriptures. Um, the reason Sunday is because the Lord rose on the first day. That's the reason the church gets together on Sunday and gives, you know, glory to the Lord on that day. So that's the day we're going to do this also. The first topic we're going to cover today in the scriptures is what is a Berean? As that's my name on Call of Duty. Um, what is a Berean? First off, Berea is a city in the, the scriptures. And a Berean, obviously, is someone from Berean. But nowadays, when we speak of a Berean, we're speaking of someone that searches the scriptures daily. And the reason why that is, in Acts 17, Paul shows up to Berea. And the scriptures say in 1711, Acts 1711, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. These people in Berea trusted in the word of God. They didn't trust in Paul, who was a, a well known for being a, a Bible scholar at the time, even before he was a Christian. He knew the scriptures and was well known for that. Yet, yet and still, they didn't trust him. And, and they were actually, um, God said they were more noble for trusting in the scriptures and not trusting in a man. Don't trust in me. Don't just trust whatever the pastor says. Learn the word of God for yourself. In fact, you're actually you're actually um, commanded to in the scriptures. Proverbs 14, 15 says, The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. A smart man is going to do what? Look at what he believes. Study the scriptures. Hebrews, Hebrews 4, 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Man, the Bible says the word of God can divide your soul and spirit. I mean, it's, it's a powerful thing when you see the word of God at work in someone's life. In the Old Testament, King Josiah, it says of him in 2 Kings 23, 25, and like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his might according to the law of Moses. Neither after him arose there any like him. And what it's speaking of in King Josiah there is, is in the chapter before this. King Josiah sends his scribe to the temple to collect the silver, to collect the money. And when he does, his, his scribe there finds the word of God, finds the Pentateuch, the law of Moses, or the first five books in the scriptures. And, and he comes back, he reads it, he comes back to King Josiah, he says, King Josiah, the way we're living, the things we're doing, they're wrong, they're, they're not according to the word of God. King Josiah reads the word of God and he says, wow, he repents and he says, Lord, you know, I've been taught this, my forefathers have done this, this, and this, but from here on, I will not do what I've been taught. I will trust your word. And he puts his faith in the word of God and lives according to the word of God from there on. And God calls him a righteous man for this. Job 23, 12. Job says this, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. How many of us could actually say that? We love the word of God more than our necessary food. I mean, man, we feed our bodies all day, but yet we forget to feed our spirit through the Word of God. Nehemiah 8.8 8 says that they stood up for the reading of God's Word in honor of God's Word. Christian, you are to know the Word of God. 1 Samuel 3.7 It says that Saul didn't even know the Lord, for his Word was not yet revealed unto him. I mean, Romans 10.17 says that we know faith is required, and Romans 10.17 says that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God is, is powerful, it's important, and we need to know it. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, To study, to show thyself approved, rightly dividing the Word. Man, we got to know the Word of God. Why? You know how many people I've talked to, I said, Hey man, did you witness to your friend? And they said, No nah, man, I, I don't know the scriptures like that. I, I can't do anything like that. That's sad because people are dying and going to heaven or hell. They need to know the Lord. They need to know what, the, what, the, what salvation is. They need to know the gospel. 
2 Timothy 3.15 says that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. From a child thou hast known the scriptures. In Deuteronomy it says you're to teach your children. So folks, children are, can know the word of God. We're to teach them to them. It's commanded that we, we teach our children the word of God. Even a child can understand the scriptures. And which are able to what? Make thee wise unto salvation. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Be ready to give an answer to the hope that is in you. Man, we're supposed to know the Word of God, study the Word of God, and be ready to share it. Why? Folks, hell is real. Jesus Christ was real. And it's very serious that we know that people are going to die and either go to heaven or hell. And the gospel, the cross, Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection is the only thing that can save them. He's the perfect propitiation for, for sins. 1 Timothy 4, 13, 15. Paul is in prison, man. He's locked up. And what is he doing? He's asking his people for what? For the word of God. I mean, it's, 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 he's locked up. He's saying, people, bring me the word of God. I urge you people to look up something called Project Pearl. One million Bibles were smuggled into China. One million. Men and women gave their life to get the word of God to people in China. I ask you this, why? Why would men and women say, I'm going to go to this third world country from America. I'm going to smuggle Bibles into these people. Well, why? Why? They left this freedom in this nation and everything that they had in this nation to give it up for what? That the gospel was that important to them. And, you know, we have friends, family that all die and... You know, they're going to have witnesses. You know, the Bible says there's witnesses at the day of judgment. Who's going to be the witnesses? Probably us standing next to them. Yeah, I knew them. I knew, you know, and, and what? And what? I, I never shared the gospel with them. You know, Paul says in Acts 18, 6, you know, he says that their blood is on your hands. You know, he said, my, my hands are clean. You know, your bloods be upon your own heads. Why? Because of the word of God. I mean, he shared the word of God with them. He was faithful in giving them the word of God. And, um, Man, we need to be that same way. And, um, I pray that this this is the Lord's day. I pray that um, you guys did give glory to the Lord. I pray that you were at church and you know did your thing and, and um, you know gave, gave glory to God, man. And this is coming to the end of the video. And um, I guess I would just pray that you guys would know one thing: that you would know that Jesus is Lord, that He died, was buried, and was resurrected on the third day for your sins. He is the propitiation not just for, for us, but for the whole wide world. And um, he's the way, the truth, and the life. God bless you all from the One God Clan.